How crazy is it that we finally got Metroid Prime Remastered, not only revealed, but released digitally today on Nintendo Switch? And it comes with four different control options for newcomers and OG fans. Let's see how they work. First, there's the default dual stick control scheme, which works like a regular first person shooter in the modern times. You move with the left stick, look with the right, although the lock on mechanic is still present. And you can shoot with either the right trigger ZR or the A button. You can even jump in morph ball mode by pressing the X button. And for my gyro control aficionados, you can activate gyro controls by going into the camera options and selecting gyro plus stick. There's also lock-on free aim if you want to use gyro controls to fine-tune your aiming while locking onto an enemy. So this is a really solid controller method. Although there's a jarring change where the scan visor is right on the D-pad instead of left. I don't know why this is, but it's immediately fixed when you switch to the classic control scheme, which plays almost exactly like the traditional tank controls on GameCube, meaning the left stick is used for turning left and right and moving forward and backward. If you want to look up, you'll have to hold the right trigger and use the left stick while standing still. The right stick is only used for changing beams. Not a very friendly control scheme for newcomers, but great for veterans. And if you want to use a GameCube controller with the Switch adapter, good news! You can do just that. Although, it doesn't work perfectly. For one, in this remaster, the start button opens the map and the select button pauses the game. The GameCube controller does not have a select button, so start only opens the map, meaning you can't access the pause menu with this controller. Usually Z opens the map, but in this it acts as another R button, so hopefully this is patched soon. What's even more of a bummer is that the analog triggers don't register in this remaster, so pressing L in classic mode will only allow Samus to strafe if she's not locked onto an enemy. Other than these issues, which admittedly some may find a deal breaker, the GameCube controller works well enough, and it's a very acceptable way to play Metroid Prime Remastered if you're feeling nostalgic. But there's a difference between 2002 nostalgia and 2007 nostalgia. That's where the pointer controls come in, and they replicate the motion controls from Metroid Prime Trilogy on Wii. It even suggests you put your controller on a flat surface for calibration. What, are we playing Skyward Sword or something? Even if your controls are off-center, recalibrating is as easy and quick as pressing the right trigger, meaning the shoot button is locked to A. Although using Joy-Cons is recommended for this scheme, you can use the Pro Controller. You probably wouldn't want to, though. Then there's the final control scheme called Hybrid, which combines the classic and pointer controls. They're basically just the classic controls, but holding R or ZR will let you gyro aim. So it's pretty much the option for those who want to play with the classic controller setup, but also want the convenience of gyro aiming. And that's a quick rundown of the controls in Metroid Prime Remastered. Some of them still need tweaking, but you'll still have a great time no matter which one you choose. 